Howdy! Welcome to our basic Excel video. If you don't use Excel frequently, then this video will help you get more comfortable. Some of you may use Excel spreadsheets prepared by other people, but you don't create your own. In this video, I'll walk you through how to enter a formula in Excel, how to cell reference, and some of the basic rules to navigate Excel. In the next basic Excel video, we'll look at the difference between absolute and relative references. You can just open up a blank Excel spreadsheet for what we're going to do now. So pause this video if you don't already have a spreadsheet open, and we'll walk through some tools together when you resume the video. Right now I'm in just a blank Excel spreadsheet. So I just opened up Excel, opened up a spreadsheet, and that's what I have here. So we're going to go really basic right now. So if you've used Excel some, then some of these things may seem a little redundant or basic. You can fast forward or stay with me and just feel really confident about your Excel skills. So in Excel, we have columns. These are our columns. They're marked with letters and we have rows. These are our rows and they're marked with numbers. We refer to each cell. So this right here that I have outlined is a cell by the column and row intersecting at that cell. So this cell right here is A1. Over here, I'm in H5. It is important to understand cell references because we want to hard code as little as possible in Excel. Hard coding means typing a number in Excel. So if I were to type in the number 10, I've hard coded the number 10 in cell A1. The number 10 is not dynamic. It will not change if I change something else in the spreadsheet. In most spreadsheets, we do need some numbers that are hard coded. These will be our variables, which we'll use to create a formula. Let's go through an example. I'm going to delete out this 10. If I want to know how much I would have to pay for 12 candy bars that cost $1.22 a piece, then I could use Excel like a calculator where I just enter in the formula equals 12 times 1.22. That gives me my answer, but this isn't really how Excel is best used. So I don't want to just type in that formula equals 12 times 1.22. It'll give me the answer, but later, if I want to know how much it costs to buy nine candy bars, then the way that I typed in the formula just now, I would need to redo the formula every time. Instead of just hard coding in a formula, I can type in my variables. So let's call our first variable number of candy bars. And our second variable will be price. You see here how the text flows over into two columns. I don't really like that. And if I were to type something into column B, it's going to cover up my words over here. So instead, I'm just going to auto fit this column. And I'll do that by moving my cursor over the intersection of columns A and B. And my cursor will go from this white plus sign that I see here to a black plus sign, and I'll double click. It'll auto fit the column to fit the content in that cell. So now I can type in 12, and I am hard coding that number, and $1.22, and if I want to, I can format that as a dollar, or if you don't like having that space between the dollar sign and the number, I can format it as currency. And then I can calculate the total cost. Now that I have the variables in, I can type in a formula. To start any formula, I want to type an equal sign. So equals quantity, which is in cell B1, times price, which is in cell B2. So in this formula, the equal sign tells Excel that what is going to follow is a formula, that it needs to actually calculate something. If I didn't have that equal sign, then Excel would just show whatever text I had typed in. After the equal sign, I can cell reference by just clicking on the 12 or using my up arrow to go to that cell. And then I'm going to use the asterisk to tell Excel to multiply. And then I want to select the cell that contains the $1.22. And we'll hit enter. And that gives us our answer. There's a few helpful things to note here. 
First, the reason I cell reference is that if I want to change the number of candy bars to 9, then my answer will also change. When I type the number into the formula, if I wanted to change the number to 9 candy bars, I had to go into the formula to do that. It's also really hard to see what variables I'm using if I actually were to have just typed that into the formula. Instead of cell referencing, it would have been hard to see what variables I was using in Excel. Here I can see the variables really clearly, and I can change them to any number to calculate a new scenario. Another helpful hint is that I can see which cells I selected because Excel highlights them in different colors. The colors match the color of the cell reference included in the formula. I can show that highlighting or that, that coloring by selecting the cell and hitting F2, at least on most computers. For some computers, the shortcut is going to be different. By double clicking or by selecting the formula bar at the top of Excel. So again, if I go on cell, in this case, cell B3, and select F2, it should reveal the formula and show the colors that are being used. Another option is to double click, and that will bring me inside of the formula. And then a third option is to click in the toolbar. In that case, the colors show up here in the formula bar rather than in the formula in the cell. Either way works, whatever you're most comfortable with. We'll pause here for this video and resume with a second video looking at an example of if I wanted to know how much it would cost me to buy anywhere from 1 to 12 candy bars. So we're going to go through looking at a list and then calculating out the cost in each of those scenarios. So check out video 2 in the basic Excel module to move on.